Okay, so you may be asking yourself, am I seeing things? No, you're not. We did just upload a video talking about Oleo Levy and how the Canucks were trying to trade him, but it was deleted because he was traded to Florida. However, we got word that he was traded to Florida like an hour ago with no word on actual returns or what the Canucks would be getting and all that. So I kind of held off on making this video, but... Now, we have ourselves what is the apparent return from Thomas Drance. The Canucks, he's hearing, will be getting back a pair of depth players in the Yolevi trade, Yuho Lamiko and Noah Juleson. Now, right away when I saw some of the names involved over here, specifically Noah Juleson, I kind of allowed everything to click, you know? It makes sense in my head how exactly this trade went down now. Because earlier today, the Vancouver Canucks placed Travis Hamannick on waivers, meaning that the right side is probably going to be consisting of Tyler Myers, Tucker Pullman, and then Luke Shen, if you want to go ahead and say that. You also have yourselves now Noah Juleson, who is a former Montreal Canadiens guy and who is a former Charlotte Checkers AHL guy. The Florida Panthers picked up Noah Juleson, I think it was a year ago, off of waivers. They ended up putting him on waivers again, he cleared, and now he is an AHL-eligible player. This is a pretty interesting move, because Noah Juleson, to me, has always been a guy that has potential to break out and to find himself into an NHL spot, but he just never was able to get it done. And the fact that he is waiver ineligible is a really good thing, because it allows him to go up and down to Abbotsford, to Vancouver, without this entire waiver situation that we would have had with Yo Levy. I'm honestly just going to put this video before the previous video I made, so if you want to get my entire opinions on Yolevi and how he's kind of a bust now, you can go ahead and watch the remaining, what, 10 minutes of this video. We also got ourselves in the trade Yuho Lamiko, who is a 25-year-old 6'3-203 center left-wing player drafted by the Panthers in the third round of the 2014 draft. He was primarily a Springfield Thunderbirds guy who played a little bit at the NHL level, but last season in the KHL, he had 8 points, 22 games, and 5 points in 44 Florida Panthers games. He was a really good producer, though, for the Finnish Liga's Carpot team, which is honestly kind of crazy because the only time he's produced at any rate that is similar to this, it was in his OHL days. So... Yuho Lamiko apparently is a Vancouver Canuck now, and he will be heading over to this team, probably as another depth forward option, maybe go over to Abbotsford, maybe, I'm not too sure if he is eligible for waivers, but either way, this appears to be the trade over here. What terrible development by the Vancouver Canucks for Ole Levy, a fifth overall pick, turned into Noah Juleson and Yuho Lamiko. You want to hear all my opinions about Levy? check out the remaining 10 minutes, but talk to me in the comments, what do you think about this trade? I hope you enjoyed this video about Trolls and I, and I'm going to say that at the end of this video, so no, I'm not going to say that here yet. Let's go over on what I recorded the other day. I've had a pretty busy weekend. I'm recording this video the night of Saturday, October 9th. It'll be uploaded in about, uh, what, 12, 14, maybe 15 hours from now? So if anything happens between this time that I'm speaking to the microphone and the video's upload time, then I apologize for not being accurate with the news. But... As we had spoken about earlier on this channel, we have ourselves some more discussion to go about with 2016 busts. And I guess that's appropriate to say now, right? Busts? Is that the word we're going to start using for these players based off of where they were taken in the draft and what has become of them? Let's talk today about the Vancouver Canucks 2016 first round pick, fifth overall, taken ahead of Matthew Kachuk, taken ahead of Jacob Chitrin, Mikhail Sergachev, Charlie McAvoy, taken ahead of guys like Dante Fabro and Clayton Keller and Tyson Jost, okay, not really the best, Logan Brown, okay, not really the best either. There are some players that were taken after this guy, and if you know me, I've been defending him for years, years and years and years, saying, oh, this guy's not a bust. No, he's a good player, just gotta give him time, injury slowed him down, whatever, whatever. But now, the Vancouver Canucks are apparently trying to trade Ole Olevi. And just the mere fact that we're even having this kind of discussion pretty much indicates where his future lies with the Vancouver Canucks. One of the big problems that the Vancouver Canucks had heading into the 2021-2022 season was that left D spot. You have yourselves Quinn Hughes and you have yourselves Oliver ekman Larson. Those are two offensively minded guys who will probably play top two, top four minutes on the left side. The problem was that final third spot. Who was going to play there? Was it going to be Ole Olevi, a guy taken by the Vancouver Canucks fifth overall, who has developed so poorly with injuries over the years, but who has found himself 
finally an opportunity to break onto the lineup, or would it be a guy like Jack Rathbone, who had just wrapped up his NCAA tenure, played a season with the Utica Comets, and was really good over there, and made his way onto the roster at the end of 2021? Who would it be? There was this entire argument going about as to whether or not one was better than the other. Would you rather have Rathbone in his offensive cowboy kind of style, whipping the puck on goal, dynamically slithering around the offensive zone, finding teammates and making passing lanes? Or would you rather have the more defensively minded, not as agile and not as dynamic, but equally smooth skater in Ole Olevi, who has had this profile built up to him towards being a potential two-way NHL defenseman. Ever since he was drafted, he was supposed to be this defensively minded guy who could contribute points. He's not going to go out there and win you a Norris because of the point production he has, but because of his overall play all around the ice. That was the profile that we had for Olevi. It's why he was the first defenseman taken off the board in 2016. However, training camp happened, the preseason happened, and I think it's a common consensus that, sure, Ole Olevi had some good games. He had some moments where I was like, oh, that was a good play by Olevi over there. He shut down the opposition very well and sent the puck up. Just holistically, taking a look at who was on this team, who played, who gave this team a better chance to win in the playing time that they had. I think most can agree that Jack Rathbone has outplayed Ole Olevi for that third roster spot. And it was a difficult decision to come to, because we all had this bias towards Olevi heading into the year, or I don't even know if it's we all. A lot of people look at this point production and said, yeah, we kind of need more of that. But there was a bias that was heading towards Olevi into the year, mostly because of the waiver situation. Olevi was drafted 2016, he was signed earlier than Rathbone, who was drafted 2017, and as a result, Ole Olevi is now eligible for waivers. Should he be sent down to the AHL's Abbotsford Canucks, he would need to go through that process, and... I mean, it's a fifth overall pick going out there, five years removed from the draft. He is still, what, 23, 24 years old, and what? He would be available to every NHL team for free? The fact is, with Jack Rathbone, you didn't have this risk. He was not waiver eligible, meaning that if they decided, okay, we can just either send you to the press box or we can send you to Abbotsford because you can develop over there, there would be no waivers for Rathbone. So automatically, there was this edge to Yolevi because he was older, because he needed the waiver wire treatment, and because it would just be a lot more difficult of a task to say no to him. But this preseason kind of showed us that Rathbone is very valuable. And as a result, we have ourselves the update over here from Rick Dollywall. Take a look at this tweet right here. The Canucks are talking trade with teams about Ole Olevi. As of now, there have been no contract talks with Alex Chase on yet. And this is via the Vancouver Athletic page. You then had Thomas Trans and Dollywall also post an article talking about the Ole Olevi thing over here. Here's what they're hearing about Olevi and the Canucks' plans as the final cuts approach. And I think, not even just reading the article, you know, you can go ahead and read the article, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and do that, but like, not even looking at what they have to say. The fact that Yolevi is even on the block kind of tells us the entire story over here. Sorry, bud, you lost. Your job is going to go to Jack Rathbone, and for Ole Yolevi, they don't want to just send him down on waivers because then they'd lose him for free. Any team out there would be like, okay, well, we can take him for free, play him on our team, and do this, do that, whatever. It would be a little bit better for the Vancouver Canucks to say, okay, if we're going to lose this guy, because there's no way Ole Olevi goes unclaimed on waivers of all places, just try to trade him for anything. A fifth round pick, trade him away for a fourth, trade him away for another prospect that may not really be living up to expectations. Here's what Cam Robinson said about the entire ordeal. He works for Elite Prospects, and he has done some fantastic work with Dauber, if you're not familiar with Cam Talking about Ole Olevi, he says if the Canucks are indeed shopping him, they surely are putting him in the bargain bin. The best case scenario would be them being able to pull an equally bust-appearing former top prospect who has another year of waiver ineligibility. Ineligibility means, okay, they would not be eligible for waivers this year, and... Best case scenario, plus one, maybe next year as well. Maybe if next year they're not good enough to play on the team, they can get sent to Abbotsford with no charges. Ole Olevi does not have that luxury, and as a result, it's a lot more difficult to turn him down. But if it's gotten to this point where it's like, yeah, the Canucks are now starting to think about other things they could get instead of Ole Olevi, it's just so unfortunate to see, dude. That 2016 offseason is looking even worse. We can make an entire video going over what went wrong in the 2016 offseason for the Vancouver Canucks, but 
From all Leo Levy being taken fifth overall to the Louis Erickson signing to Eric Goodbranson for Jared McCann and draft picks, this year was just bollocks. Really bad right there. And I know it was bad enough to the point where I was like, yeah, we, we got Pedersen the year after. In 2016-17, we were so bad, we got Petey. But come on. The outcome to me doesn't justify the process, nor does it take away the pain of how we felt in that 2016-17 year. And Ole Olevi is just a big part of that, you know? I'm kind of done at this point, mostly because I've been defending this guy for so long, but we saw it in training camp. He was getting tired. He already knew what was going on with the bag skate and all that, yet he wasn't prepared. Travis Green said that he feels like Olevi didn't do himself any favors with how he performed this training camp. Meanwhile, you have other guys that are coming into the system for the first time. Klimovich, Rathbone, okay, he was here earlier, but you get it. He was in the college system for a while. That are just fine. Danila Klimovich stuck around with this team for a long freaking time, despite the fact that he was playing in the second-tier Belarusian league last year. Was it second-tier, third-tier? One of those. He wasn't even in the top league, and this is a guy that is showing that work ethic to force his way onto the lineup. Ole Olevi is healthy now. He's not injured. He's no longer suffering from the same things that have been holding him back the past few years. So what do you have to do at this point? You are at the best shape of your life. Go out there and prove that you belong on this team. And he hasn't. Sure, change of scenery could be very beneficial. Maybe Olivia goes to a team that is not supposed to be all too good, and he gets top four minutes because, I don't know, whichever team he goes to just doesn't have any other left-handed defenseman that they could value higher than him. And maybe just getting a role in the NHL conditions his mind, conditions his body, conditions his legs, and how quickly he's able to move his feet. Maybe it says, okay, yeah, this is NHL hockey. We gotta go out there, we gotta improve, and we gotta get fixed to this mold. Maybe a change of scenery is what he needs to become a full, I don't know, let's say 15-year NHL veteran with an Ironman streak that lasts 14 years long. He ends up getting a max of like 35 points in a year, but he's a consistent 25-plus minute guy. Maybe that happens, and if it does, good for you. But for Olivier Olevi and the Vancouver Canucks, it has just not worked out, despite me defending this decision and the development development of this guy for so freaking long. Remember when we had the Sammy Salo stuff in TPS Turku, where, oh, Yolevi is being mentored by Salo, and Salo is saying all these good things about him, but Salo is Salo, and he's not afraid to give tough love. Maybe that tough love wasn't enough. Maybe all this stuff that we were giving towards this guy was not enough. Maybe all the resources, maybe the fifth overall draft pick was a little bit too much. Talk to me in the comments, what do you think about the Vancouver Canucks shopping all Yolevi? I don't really know why I am so... I don't know, emotionally fueled, I guess, by this decision. Maybe it's because internally I feel betrayed. I said this in the previous video as well, but like, betrayed by the hockey gods, dude. Ole Olevi's on the block, and he may not be a Vancouver Canuck any longer by the time the season starts. Actually, no, he won't be, because he'll either be sent on waivers, or the Vancouver Canucks would have traded him for something. Talk to me in the comments, what do you think? I hope you enjoyed this Rosh Hashanah 99. And, bye.